Hey everyone, how you doing? It's your friendly neighborhood artist. My name is Jane. If you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. Here we are. It's gift giving time. Gonna be the holidays. Actually, technically we're in the holidays right now. I just wanted to put this little comprehensive gift guide together for you all. I put it on my stories and some of you responded that you would enjoy that. So I decided to go all in and see what I could come up with. I am so excited to break this all down and kind of put it into categories for you all. And there will be timestamps. So there will be a little line. You can see the bar below this YouTube video so that you can go to whichever category you would like to see. So before we get started though, here's a word from our sponsor. Take it away. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including watercolor, photography, colored pencils, illustration, music, and more. Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. So for those of you who are looking to explore and learn, this is your opportunity, your creative playground. I personally am interested in taking this course by Jazza because it seems that he knows quite a thing or two about inking and really bringing his illustrations to life. He takes you in stages through the sketching process to inking and adding color. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Plus their annual subscription is less than $10 a month. That's less than the cost of most meals these days. So why not give yourself the gift of learning more creative skills to broaden your horizon? I believe we as creative people do our best whenever we're looking to learn more and are open to it. So explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare. So with that being said, let's get started with this guide. Okay, so let's talk about pencils first and sketching accessories. I'm just gonna start off with the best of the best here. These are some of my favorite sketchbooks. Moleskin, I just bought this, I'm excited for it, and this Hanamula too. So both of these have little expandable pockets in the back to be able to put your sketches in or whatever that you are, you know, kind of carrying with you. And I really enjoy that one. You can't really go wrong with sketchbooks whenever it comes to gift giving. So, you know, you don't have to go with those. Those are just a little bit more, they have a, a little bit more distinction to them. And I, I think they're fantastic. As far as graphite goes, you know, if you're, if you're feeling like just getting, you know, general pencils are kind of um, generic or you're not really feeling it, I recommend these two right here, which um, this is the Faber-Castell 9000 Jumbo. And you can tell, I'm gonna show it to you. You can tell that this, this one is much more thicker than this one. Then this one is the Stadler uh, Mars Lumograph Black. So this has an extra amount of carbon in it. So they have kind of a matte finish and they're darker than your usual graphite pencils. They also don't have the sheen that graphite pencils have. So that is uh, one option for you. If you haven't tried water soluble graphite, I highly recommend it because it is kind of like painting with graphite. So it's a lot of fun because it kind of gives you the the control of being able to kind of lay things down really quickly and then paint them and then it quickly dries because it's graphite. These are the Lyra, Lyra. They're really not in good shape so they really wouldn't look good up close but this is a 2B and I think a 9B so it's super super black and then we also have the Graphitant pencil. These are fantastic because these have just enough pigment in them so they have kind of a muted tone whenever you add water to them. You can add water and they kind of have this fantastic muted beautiful colors you know and then this year they have Graphitant paint pans which I think is fantastic. I have not tried those yet. I actually kind of want to put those on my list. I found that they are on uh, Blix website, but they are out of stock currently. I would just keep your eye on that. So that's, that's one to keep in mind. I really think that Derwent goes out of it, their way to create something different for artists that is a little bit um, more innovative and just kind of outside of the box. So, so Prismacolor sets are usually on sale this time of year. For those of you who are aspiring to get a larger set, I would keep, your, keep my eye on some of the deals that you can get online. But if I were going to actually recommend something, I would go with Polychromos. It's kind of an old faithful. It's just, they're such wonderful pencils that you can rely on, they're open stock. So that's always a big plus. Uh, as far as the whole buying pencils are concerned, I haven't heard anything else about when they're gonna be released. I know that um, in my previous video, we talked about that. And I think the latest that they'll be coming out from what I understand, as far as I know, is January. So they may not be released before Christmas. I think it would be really smart if they were released before Christmas because all of us could put it on our wish list, but 
I, you know, there's nothing I can do about that, obviously. So those two brands I highly recommend. I know they're expensive. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more budget friendly, I would go with the Art and Fly 72 set. I did a review of that particular set and I also released a video where there's no music on the voiceover so you can hear me because apparently I don't know my volume levels. What's really nice about it is 72 pencils for $30 as far as I know that was the most recent price that I saw on Amazon and I highly recommend their brush markers too beautiful and they work together so well if you have a dry media artist in the family cases are always nice I'm telling you right now I love this set it is the Koei Noor polycolor portrait set now this is for your portrait artist in your life or if you are just wanting a nice set of portrait colored pencils that are good quality. They're oil based. I did a review on these. I love them. They're fantastic. And I think they're on par with polychromos as far as quality is concerned, but they have no light fast information from what I could gather. So that kind of, mm, you know, that's up to you. Also kind of pivoting off of that is, are the tritone pencils? Now these are three colors in one, hence the name, but they're fun to work with. And then they also have a, a thicker one called the magic pencils. And those are kind of marketed towards kids, but I think they're fun. I think anybody can have them. And so I actually did a review on those too. So these are fun and they're, they have a little learning curve, but I, I still think that they make for a great gift. I really do. And you can just add them to your collection too. So these are from Castle Arts and they have about nine sets of these and they're based off of artists. And they have like a little guide inside where you can draw the birth of Venus or Starry Night. And they have different uh, sets, which um, some of them aren't based off of artists. Some of them are like botanical and portrait, but I think they're fantastic. And for 15 bucks, you really can't go wrong. I mean, really, they're fun. I like these. These are very, very novel. I just think that they, they look really good. And I know why I was attracted to them just for the packaging alone. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I think for 15 bucks, you can't really go wrong. Real quick, too, before we move on to um, watercolor and ink. This is the Eye Point Halo by Westcott. This is an electric pencil sharpener. I think an electric pencil sharpener is really good for any colored pencil artist and some of the graphite too. And really it's nice because it has a sensor in it so that you won't over sharpen your pencils and um, you won't be mad. <laughs> so this is a, an anger management tool <laughs> in a sense. And I've had this for, I don't know, four years and I've, I've always really liked it and it's it hasn't done me wrong yet. It hasn't broke. It's really, really nice. I like it. I think it's about 20 bucks. So it's a nice little stocking stuffer for your artist that uh, does work in pencil. We're going to move on to water soluble media and we're going to get into ink too. So I'm going to try and separate that from watercolor, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to try to at least. First off, we're going to dive right into watercolor pans. Really some of the best quality watercolors are in these sets. This is the Sennelier and this is the Schmincke. I bought this back in July and I haven't gotten to play with it as much as I wanted to. However, that's going to change very, very soon. I obviously love the Sennelier because I've been a long time fan of Sennelier because they're, they're honey based and they are transparent. So they're really good for layering and they're really good for portrait work. So, but I also realized that they're not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody likes Sennelier. So it's all kind of a personal preference. If you're looking for something that's not quite that expensive, but is really, really amazing in quality. I've said it before, I'll say it again. White Knights Watercolor by St. Petersburg. Excellent. They were my first set of watercolors that I really kind of splurged on. And I think they were 36. And yeah, there are 36 in here, and this is really embarrassing because it's very, very dirty. Um, they are really, really competitive, and their pans are bigger than the half pans or the full pans of some of these more expensive brands. So definitely 100% recommend those. Uh, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more uh, for the starter uh, watercolorist, the Daniel Smith, you're not going to go wrong with these because I believe this is like 25 bucks and it's a mixing set and it comes with a mixing chart that the artist can do. It's a little pocket size too, good for travel. Let's talk watercolor markers, okay? So we're gonna get started with those. Also, we're gonna talk about watercolor pencils. The Tombow markers, I've had these for four or five years, maybe even longer. I think I got these in 2013 and I'm not kidding you, even though I don't use them full time, um, the nibs don't fray, they don't, I mean, you have to do some serious damage. These things are awesome. And these are hands down one of the best, one of the best. I am really looking forward to maybe having this item. I've really fallen in love with these. 
these are the Kurataki Clean Color, Zig Clean Color Real Brush. Now, these are different from some of your more mainstream brush pens on the market because they have this really fine tip and you can get into like the little nooks and crannies of some of your, you know, portraits or some of your, you know, I used it for Inktober a lot because they are dye based. Now I bought these the other day and I've had my eye on them for quite some time because I am a fan of Faber-Castell. I'm going to, I'm also a fan of the Albert Durer watercolor pencils, which we'll talk about. These are the Albert Durer watercolor pens, markers, I'm sorry. They are the markers, they have the brush tip and they have the more finer bullet tip. But these dissolve completely, as well as the Eco Line. There's no, and, and the Tombos, and the real brush pens. I mean, the reason why I am picking all of these is because they completely dissolve underwater and they, they're amazing. The difference with this one is they are pigment, they have pigment in them instead of dyes. So whenever they actually dry, they look more like real pigment based watercolor, like a pan watercolor. So pretty inventive idea there. Um, these are not cheap. They are about seven bucks each, but you can pretty much save whenever you buy, like I think the, the five color one that has the mixing colors, it's $28, I think, 28 or 29. Now I put these on my wish list. We'll see how it goes. As far as watercolor pencils are concerned, the Albert Durer watercolor pencils by Faber-Castell are by and large the best on the market. So they act a lot like watercolor once they have dissolved underwater. These are expensive, not gonna lie. I really can't think of an alternative. I mean, I've tried some other watercolor pencils and nothing comes to mind whenever it comes to a recommendation for that. And these come in smaller sets, of course, uh, but if your artist in your family is looking to up their game with a watercolor pencil, give them a little set of these and they will thank you for them <laughs> because they're pretty amazing. But the watercolor Albert Durer pencils, if you know someone who already has them and you're trying to think of something different for them, these are the Albert Durer Magnus versions. So they're the bigger versions. They're the big sister. I haven't used them a whole lot, but they do dissolve completely underwater. And um, I'm actually going to do a dedicated video on these. So real quick before we move into the ink category, I'm just going to say I, I kind of forgot about gouache. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> So the Himi gouache is an ultra popular gouache and this is very, very affordable. It runs anywhere from $17 to $24. You get 18 pans and I love them. I think they're fantastic for gouache. And then of course I did the review on the 56 colors. Now I say go for it. I, you know, people have asked me, is it worth it? You know, absolutely. If you love more color, you know, if you like to just keep it simple and like have something that's just sort of, you know, a nice color mixing set. This is your, this is your, your baby right here, right? But the 56 color one, I mean, it's definitely not travel friendly, but it sure is nice to have extra colors. And um, I did notice that I ended up enjoying myself more with more colors because there were a lot of pastel colors. I didn't have to always color mix. And a lot of times, you know, you do spend a lot of time color mixing with gouache. So it's up to you, you know, it's, a, it's all about needs really. If you're going to splurge on, on squash, if you're going to splurge on gouache, I would say go with the Holbein. They are, by, they are by far my favorite. Personally, I can definitely recommend them. They were the first review I ever had on this channel. And uh, there's also a designer set, but this is a nice mixing set here. Um, M. Graham is another favorite and they have an introductory set of mixing colors for $25. So that's gouache. Let's talk about some of the things that I fell in love with during Inktober, some of the more ink-based products. I feel like ink is such an intimate medium and I could go into a whole other video about why every artist should dabble with ink, but that's another story for another day, another video. But what I really fell in love with were these Kurataki Menso brushes. They are called the Zig Cartoonist Menso brushes. There are three of them. And I really found myself using the smallest one for some beautiful detail work and the beautiful lines that they produce. You have so much control. I can say that I do love the quality of these and what you can get with them. And I think they're worth the money. So from there, we're going to go on to, <laughs> this is, um, this is how Dr. PH Martins works. Um, a lot of their stuff is a little bit experimental. And this is one of my favorite 
works of art here. It is called the Radiant Concentrated Watercolor. And I'm sure you were asking, well, why isn't it in the watercolor category? Well, here's the thing. It's dye-based, so it's a lot like ink, and it kind of behaves like ink that's water-based. So I like to call it kind of more of a water-based ink because it does stain. The great advantage of these is that they are beautiful. They are so versatile. You could actually use them to dye fabric if you want. Uh, it can be mixed with soda ash for that. And you could also use it on technical pens, airbrush, for just brush work like I use. And they, they last a long time. Now these aren't really cheap, but you can buy them open stock for about $8 a piece, or you can get them in these sets. There's four sets and each of them I believe are 70. So um, this is a great, nice little splurge. And I think you'll enjoy them. If you haven't tried them yet, definitely try them and ask for them on your wish list. I'm going to recommend these and I, I'll, you know, I didn't put them in the marker category because they have India ink in them. And these are the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. These are very, very nice. I really like these and they make for great sketches. They make good for illustration. If you use a vellum paper and smudge them, you can actually blend them together like with your thumb and your finger. Uh, you don't have to get this big giant set. Uh, this is probably about a hundred bucks, which has all of the colors in it, but they do have color like coordinated sets. So they have like a, I think a tropical set and they have a portrait set. Beautiful colors. I love them. They're fantastic. And also they have a big sister. They have the big brushes. So they're bigger, they're fatter. I really like these. In fact, I think I like these better than I like those because these are really great for layout and laying down color. So you can also buy those in a complete set. And I don't think that they have smaller, smaller sets, but they are sold open stock. So this is, I think, about 120. So, you know, these are these are really nice, too. And together they work wonderful. So if you want to splurge, put them both on your list and say, thanks in advance. <laughs> I want to talk to you just for a moment about these two guys here. These are one and the same. They are, again, a Dr. P.H. Martin's product. They are called the Spectralite Private Collection Liquid Acrylic. So they're kind of like an acrylic ink, but they're kind of like a fluid acrylic, too. So they kind of like balance between both worlds. I really like them. I used them in, in the Inktober to lay down a wash that maybe I wanted to not be able to re-wet. Maybe I wanted to layer it, layer on top of that. And that's what these are for because once they are dry, they are permanent. You can also use these Dr. P.H. Martin's Spectralite in, you can use them in technical pen. That's usually not the case with acrylic ink. So there is an advantage there. Let's talk pastels real quick. Now, not a lot of people actually are interested in pastels that actually watch my channel, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover them for those of you who are watching that love pastels and like to actually integrate pastels into your work or you're a dedicated pastel fan. Oil pastels, I've tried cheap brands and I've tried expensive brands, and I'm gonna talk about a couple of those right here. I've got the Sennelier, they're like painting with a lipstick. I know that that's kind of a coined phrase of theirs, but it's really actually true. They're very, very soft. In fact, some pastel artists don't like them because they're soft. Um, if you like something a little bit firmer, these by Caran d'Ache, these are a little bit more firm, but they're loaded with pigment. I love how smooth they go on. And I like how the, the Sennelier's go on too, but these are nice because these are a little bit smaller and you can work more precisely. The big selling point with me on these is that I have cheaper brands and they play well with others. That was a big deal for me because I have like several different cheaper brands. And in fact, I mean, if you are just wanting to dabble in pastel and you're wanting a cheaper brand, I have tried all the cheap brands. And I gotta say, I'm, this is gonna be surprising maybe for you guys. Uh, the Crayola oil pastels are like, I think 10 bucks for 24 colors. They're amazing. There's look a little bit more like crayons, but they're thicker. And I think that they're fantastic for the price point, especially. So let's talk soft pastels. The pan pastels, I'm always gonna recommend those. I think they're like painting, but with pastels. This is one of the sets, they have four or five different sets, and I think I have several of them. And they're not cheap, they're pricey. So these are wonderful though, because they don't have a lot of dust pickup. And I just like the, the application of it. It's a little bit more like painting. You don't have to buy this big of a set. They come in sets of six, and they come in metallic sets too. They're sold open stock as well. I got these for 40 bucks. They are the Mungyo Gallery Oil Pastels, and I use them in that... Okay, these are oil pastels, not chalk pastels. Oh my God. Okay, 
Yeah, they are oil pastels. These rock, okay? And these do play well with the car and dash and vice versa. So get these if you don't want to, you know, spend a whole lot of money. Like I said, they're about 40 bucks. That's a general pretty good price for all of them that you're getting. And this is a set of 40, 48. And I know they have a larger set, I believe, too. Getting back to chalk pastels or soft pastels, as we will say. The most affordable set that I have and I can recommend are these, and these are the Mungyo as well, and they are like little small half sticks, but they are really, really good for being only about, I think, 10 or $15, and you get 64 colors. They're very small, very small, but um, they're fantastic. I mean, I, I'll show you what I did with them. I made this with those pastels, so it just goes to show you that you don't have to have super expensive art supplies to make good art. So let's talk about acrylics and then oils. Get to know your artist if you're shopping for them. You know, if they like a certain brand, I would recommend getting a set. Uh, however, you know, the seasoned acrylic artist and seasoned oil painter, they're gonna have like an arsenal of paint already. But if you wanna do a nice kind of slick move, well, here's the thing. You'll never get enough of white. You can use titanium white as kind of a nice all-purpose stocking stuffer. Um, this is the Promalda for oil painters. This is the whitest white you can possibly find. And I, you can tell I've used it. It's disgusting. And then, <laughs> and then I always buy extra of this whenever it goes on sale. So there are definitely sets of the Studio Acrylics on sale right now. Um, they also have the Utrecht line, which is a, actually a pretty good quality line. I like them. If you do have that acrylic artist in your life that has everything or you have everything in your acrylic arsenal, these are going to blow your mind. <laughs> they're amazing, eye-popping, and they're all like these neon colors. It's a luminous set from the uh, Holbein Heavy Body Acrylic, and they're, it's a $60 set, but if you think about it, that's really not that bad, because if you buy acrylics open stock on the higher end and the heavier body, they're about 10 bucks a tube. So I think that's a fairly, fairly reasonable price, and I highly recommend them if you like neon colors especially. And you can create some special effects with these too. So highly recommend them. Highly recommend them. How about furniture? Whenever I say that, I mean, do you have a good chair to sit on? Um, this is something that I need to practice what I preach because I need a new chair. I really do. Something with a lumbar support because, you know, we're either standing or sitting a lot and we need good support. And having a, a good back or at least taking care of the one that you have um, is highly, highly important. And also... A lot of artists kind of forget this, and I do too as well, is that, you know, whenever you're drawing, technically you should be drawing flat because of the distortion possibility and also because of your neck, because this is not a good position to be in all the time. I found that out through Inktober. What I would recommend is a tabletop easel. I want to say that this is an art alternatives, but it's nice. It's just, it's kind of a standard wooden tabletop easel. It's nice and adjustable. It's sturdy. And some of them have more of like the French easel kind of feel to them. They'll have a, a drawer underneath them so you can put your supplies. But I highly recommend something that can give you support. And it's also going to help you with your artwork in the long run. So let's talk a good stocking stuffer, but not a very glamorous one. Fixative. Um, the workable fixative from Krylon is one of my absolute favorites and I know a lot of uh, people who work with that with dry media and then you know uh, it's, it's always nice to have a fixative for pastels because you just and this is also good for charcoal because you'll smear it otherwise and then you know you've got your gloss varnish for and matte varnish for uh, painters so something to keep in mind. So we come to the kind of the final miscellaneous category and some of the more unconventional things that you can get for an artist or you can ask for. And I would like to present to you some books. I'm looking at more of the coffee table books that I've enjoyed over the years that I recommend. Uh, first off, if you love Stranger Things, this is Visions from the Upside Down. It is absolutely wonderful. It's art, all of these artists' renderings of Stranger Things. And I mean, they've got a Divagorgon in here. They've got like all kinds of beautiful artwork in here. Just beautiful. I love this. And uh, I actually bought this for myself last year. This list price is $35, but I know it's 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 cheaper than that. I think, I think it was 25. Amazing. There's all these different artists on here and I think you'll really enjoy it. Or if you know somebody who loves Stranger Things in, in general, they don't even have to be an artist, this is the way to go. So there's a local artist who has gained national recognition. Her name is Ali Cavanaugh. So look at these beautiful paintings. They are actually layers on 
uh, watercolor layers on giant slabs of clayboard. And that was kind of her thing that she came up with. And this is a lovely, lovely coffee table book. And it also has her early oil paintings and kind of her journey. This is probably about 30 bucks and it's worth the money. And it's a wonderful coffee table book, but also just an art enthusiast book. So if you got a particular niche that you really love, I mean, you can always find some good Funko Pop dolls probably in that niche, you know, for that nerddom, whatever it is that you like. These are, um, uh, these are the X-Files. I got Mulder and Scully with me. For those of you who know and or don't know, I am really into metaphysics and I really love Oracle card decks. I love the Wisdom of the Oracle. This is one of my favorite decks of all time. Um, the Angelarium deck. I'm really not... I don't know. I really haven't developed um, a connection to this deck other than the artwork, but um, really beautiful, really interesting art here. Um, reminds me of Beksinski a lot. And then the Starseed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. The artwork is by Danielle Noel, and it is gorgeous. I mean, it was just eye-catching. I had to have it. So they kind of serve a dual purpose. You can appreciate the art, and if you use it for daily stuff, then, you know, there's that. All right, we made it. I know, I know. It was very, very extensive, uh, covered a lot of areas. So I hope that you found this informative and entertaining. I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season and a safe one as well. I hope that you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for more content like this and more. Okay? And I will see you before the end of the year. Okay. Thank you. Take care and keep creating everybody. Specific colors that are, are made, handmade. <laughs> Don't know my volume lever. These are firm pastels by the new pastel by the first one color. Hello. Hey Don, how you doing? Fine and dandy. Good. Hey, um, I'm filming next door. <laughs> I can hear every word you're saying. Well, that's okay. I've had these for several years. There goes my cat. What you doing, baby girl? I was going to see if she was going to talk to me. So um, if you're really looking to, you know, splurge on that person that loves oil pastels, not oil pastels, <laughs> uh, you can buy them online through an authorized retail retailer. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's now nine o'clock. I've been filming for eight hours. Okay. So. <laughs>